tug of war with your dog is going to make them aggressive and dominant over you. Or will it? Welcome back to Myth Busting Mondays. My name is Skylar, I'm a certified dog trainer and pet nutritionist, and Myth Busting Mondays is my way of taking very common myths and misinformation in the pet industry and breaking it down to get to the actual reality of the situation. Dog training is a completely unregulated field and we get a lot of interesting claims. Today we're going to be diving into tug of war and whether this encourages aggressive behavior in your dog or if it'll make your dog dominant over you so they're the alpha and will no longer listen to you. To make a long story short, none of that's true, so let's dig into how these myths came to be and what the actual truth is. So first and foremost, does playing tug of war make your dog more aggressive? As a dog trainer, I work with a ton of reactive and in some cases aggressive dogs. The way that I define aggression in dogs is on a reactivity scale. Reactivity can be, you know, fear-based or aggressive emotions all the way to way overexcited. Um, in short, it's this dog has emotions that exceed what is considered rational for the situation. Aggression is usually caused by an overreaction of fear or stress. Dogs, like most animals, are naturally self-preserving, so they don't jump into, you know, biting or attacking unless they truly feel like their life is in danger, and doing those things, putting themselves in harm's way, is the only way to get through the situation unharmed or less harmed. So dog aggression is truly a serious topic and if you are experiencing aggressive behaviors I highly recommend that you reach out to a reputable positive reinforcement trainer in order to help get on top of it and work on the root cause of that aggression. Quick disclaimer, if you do have a dog that exhibits true aggressive qualities and you are working with a trainer to help correct the actual root cause of those emotions, tug of war is probably not the game for you. Same goes with dogs that have resource guarding. Resource guarding is a form of aggression that comes from a place of insecurity in their resources, whether that be food or toys or their favorite spot on the couch. Um, this is very common in dogs that maybe are used to having less resources that they did actually have to protect. It can also be completely random. They've always been an only dog in a home. They've been very spoiled. Like they're logically isn't any reason for this resource guarding to occur, but sometimes it just happens. Regardless of what kind of resource guarding it is, if your dog is experiencing resource guarding, tug of war can increase this behavior and can make things more dangerous and more harmful long term. So in short, if your dog is working through aggressive tendencies or has a history of resource guarding, there's plenty of other games for you to play to bond with your dog. One of the most common concerns when it comes to aggression and tug of war is dogs biting people. Dog bites are one of the number one qualifiers of aggressive dogs. People hear that your dog has a bite history, they immediately go to aggressive. And there's various reasons why dogs bite. Every single dog is capable of biting. So we always wanna make sure that we're monitoring body language and making sure we understand how our dog's reacting to situations in order to keep ourselves safe. But the most common way that biting happens in tug of war is because you're tugging with too small of a object. Things like balls, or small plush toys or small ropes should not be used for tug of war. If you're gonna play tug of war with your dog, you want something long enough that even if your dog chokes up on it as they're tugging, they aren't going to get your hands. This can happen, this does happen, and it can be fairly common depending on your dog's play style. And no one wants to get bit, especially in these cases where it's accidental. Playing tug of war with a toy that's long enough that even if your dog chokes up on it, it still far away from your hands, is key to helping to prevent those accidental bites. Along with this, one of the rules that I give my clients when it comes to tug of war is that no kids under 12 should be playing tug of war with their dog, period, ever. There's too many risk factors. Now, 12 is an arbitrary number, I totally agree, and you can decide for yourself with your kids what age you feel comfortable with them engaging in this kind of play with your dog, but the real problem is dogs make mistakes, they might get you on accident at some point while you're playing, and as adults we tend to have better regulation of our emotions. So we're able to understand better that if my dog choked up on that toy and accidentally bit my hand while we were playing, it was an accident, and then we can regulate our emotions as much as we can in that situation, 
and decide how we would like to proceed, whether that means, you know, that really hurt and it happens very often, we're gonna choose other ways of playing, or whoops, maybe I shouldn't have played tug of war with something so small. Little kids don't have that same emotional regulation and it can be really scary for them, it can hurt a lot, and things can escalate. If you've ever seen a really small child get very frustrated and start hitting or kicking, you probably know where I'm going with this. It can escalate the situation from a whoops to crazy very, very fast. Another one of the rules I give clients when it comes to tug of war is that your dog should be winning the majority of the time. And this can tie into our claim of dogs being dominant and becoming the alpha of the household. If you've watched any of my other dog behavior videos in the past, you probably know that anything regarding alpha theory or dominance theory has been widely disproven for over three decades at this point. So anytime you hear those two words in relation to dog training, some red flags should be going off in your brain. I've heard plenty of trainers recommend if you're going to play tug of war, you should always win and never let your dog win because then they will think that they have more power over you and act out in all these various ways that are just completely not fact-based. I recommend that your dog wins the majority of the time to play tug of war because when we're playing with our dogs, we want to foster that bond and we want to have fun with them and we want to give them outlets to do dog things and have some fun. And having them win the majority of the time helps to boost their confidence. It helps to better form that bond between you and your dog. Whereas if every single time they're losing, it's not fun for them. Like think, think back to playing like Monopoly or something when you were a kid. There's always that person that cheated and so they won every single time. And at some point you're kind of like, I'm not gonna play with you because you just cheat every time and you win every time. And that's kind of what we're working with here. If you're winning every single time, it's just not fun. It also increases the risk of injury to yourself or your dog. If you're super adamant about winning, even if your dog's thrashing around trying to get that toy from you, and you're not letting go, in fact, you're clamping on tighter, you're at more risk of injury, your dog's at more risk of injury. It's always better if things are getting too crazy to let go, let your dog run off with the toy, have their fun, have their proud moment of, ooh, I finally got it. And then if they come back for more, grab back on and do a little bit more tug. Along those same lines for safety for your dog, you should never be able to lift your dog up off the ground while you're playing tug. Your goal shouldn't be to thrash them back and forth and you know give them potential whiplash. So does playing tug of war increase aggression and does it make your dog the alpha over you? No to both of these questions. Are there things that you need to take into consideration before playing tug of war with your dog? Absolutely. If you're working on specific behaviors that can be amplified by playing tug of war in a negative way, it's something that you should avoid. If you are worried about your dog accidentally biting you or your child's hand while you're playing tug of war, don't play tug of war. Or get something long enough that the risk is less. Not impossible, but less. If you're playing tug of war with your dog, you should let them win the majority of the time. It keeps it much more fun for everybody, helps to prevent injury to your dog, and also helps to boost their confidence. And last but not least, if after this video you've decided you still don't like the idea of tug of war or you don't want to play tug of war with your animals, that's totally fine. There are plenty of other games that boost confidence and can be a lot safer or more friendly to the different members of your home. This has been another installment of Myth Busting Mondays. Feel free to give this video a like and share with your friends if you enjoyed this video, you learned something, or you maybe think that other people should know this information. And be sure to leave a comment down below with any other myths that you would like me to cover in a future Myth Busting Mondays. I will see you all in my next video. Bye!